Today I have Elsbeth Pendleton Wheeler with me, and um, I am excited to have this conversation because Elsbeth ha is basically um, a, a testament to when you know when you change things about your lifestyle and nutrition, how much it can change your cycle. Um, so we see a lot of people at Oceanside that have. Um, potentially conditions like endometriosis or PCOS and, um, or even just um, abnormal cycles uh, have been on birth control for a long time and really don't even have any understanding. I mean, our culture does not do a good job of teaching girls and women about their cycle and, and how to regulate themselves cyclically, um, even from a workout and eating, just even managing it. So we oftentimes are the first ones that ask somebody, hey, is your cycle regular or do you ovulate? And normally we get this like, uh, maybe, which is a total no, uh, or like that they don't know, you know, like, so we often have those conversations. And for us, it's as, it's a vital sign, just like we would be asking, do you sleep? What do you eat? Um, you know, do you poop? Are you peeing regularly? Like those basic things we're asking, is your cycle regular? Do you ovulate? Um, and is it really dysfunctional for you? So we are always talking to people about that at Oceanside. And I, um, and I just want to interview Elsbeth because I have heard so much about how she has really made this transformation, which is not easy. So I'm going to let Elsbeth sort of introduce herself and just sort of start to say why, like, why did this need transforming for you? Like, what was you know, what was the problem? Um, so when I first got my period, when I was like 16, it was not a, not an issue and not something I really thought about. Um, but then in my 20s in college, it really started to change and it started to be really painful. And I would have a complete meltdown once a month right before my period which was like very weird for me because I'm not really someone who has meltdowns. <laughs> and, um, and I just had like two days of really awful cramps, like really couldn't do anything, was always having to take ibuprofen. Um, and I've always struggled with my skin and acne. Um, and so the first thought I had was birth control because that's what I was taught. Yeah, just um, shut it down. Up. Just shut it yeah. off. Just, just suppress it all. And, but I'd never been on it. And uh, whenever I went to doctors, they that's what they said. And I just, I knew there was so much going on hormonally in my body. I just couldn't wrap my head around the idea of messing with it even more with birth control. And so I just was like, there's got to be something else. I this, I really don't want to do this. So I think, I mean, a lot of people go on birth control and then have this whole journey of coming off it, which yeah. sounds hard. But I never went on it, which was, I think, helpful. Um, and then the year after college, my therapist recommended the book Woman Code to me by Elisa VT and because I was just saying like why do I have a complete meltdown and feel so blue once a month and she was she just thought that it would help me and I read it and I was immediately hooked and I've always really liked toying with my diet um and thinking about food so I think like the food chart and she gives you recipes and like really breaks down what to eat during each phase was intriguing to me and felt like somewhere I could start but and it it wasn't like something that you just like get overnight it, I had to like read the book and slowly start implementing yeah. things um had you ever I mean it was even the thought of the cycles were you aware of what was happening in your body was that part of an education that you received anywhere no I mean it was just like in health class, you're, you have your period, and it's probably going to suck. And then <laughs> the it's rest right. of the month is 
it's there for you. But then, yeah, reading one because I was like, there's four phases. Yeah, something different going on in each phase, and your body needs something different, both nutritional wise and like how exercise and emotionally during each phase. Yeah. and I was like, this makes so much sense because I don't feel the same each week. Right. What's going on isn't the same. Yeah, like, and I think so. that a lot of us, when we first actually start tracking and understanding this, it's like we all knew that deep down. It just wasn't spelled out. You know, that that was all of our experience that there's this transition, there's this change. It's different every week. Um, but that not understanding that, you just kind of go along and yeah. think, well, I guess things are bad one week and good another. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So at what point, so you started with the food because food was kind of your, your niche and um, that wasn't hard for you. Yeah. And yeah, I've always, and I've been gluten free for a while, which I think like if you can do one thing, it's probably go off gluten and sugar just the week before your period. Just to <laughs> yeah. start. Like if you just need a baby step. But some of the little steps, because when you think, when I was first reading the book, I was super overwhelmed by all these changes I had to make. And so I was just like, okay, this week I'm just going to look at the nuts that are good for my cycle and do the nuts or do the fruit. Just like choose one thing and not have to do like, I have to implement everything right away. Yeah, because that you won't you won't be successful. <laughs> it's, yeah. too, it's too much. And just like adding some ingredients, picking things you like, and then over time I'm able to do it more and more because it's like I remember it, but it takes a while. Yeah. Um and what yeah. about um so that was the food, so that was kind of uh, an easier start for you, but you did it uh one step at a time. And I I do think starting off gluten free um probably was a you know, you were already a couple steps up the ladder type of thing. Um, sugar's a big one though, too. So mm -hmm. that's, that's not, that's not easy. Um, so what about some of the other changes that you made either working out or sleeping? What, what else did you start to do? What were some of the bigger changes? Um, I honestly didn't really start the working out until this past year. So I've, I think I've been doing it for like two years now, but like last summer I didn't really do it very much because I was living with my sister and she wasn't, we were at different phases every, yeah. in our cycle every time we were cooking together. So it's hard, but um, I just didn't have the bandwidth for the whole thing. So I just focused on the food the first winter. And then this fall, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready for the next step. And I got this big calendar for my wall where I just like wrote what phase I was in on each day. So I could just have a really big visual. And then I just wrote at the beginning of each phase, like some keywords for things to be thinking about, like try something new, like running, cardio, relax, take your flocation, you know, <laughs> like yeah, things just a reminder. And so I could see it every day. So I was just bringing the book everywhere, looking through it to see. So that was the next, step and then and also like the first part when I was doing it I, I kind of skimmed over that like your ovulatory phase is, is super short and your lute luteal phase is much longer which is and a I was, which is a bummer you get sick of the food so it's okay I'm like um, I love how I feel like it's like follicular ovulation then I'm like oh this luteal phase is so it's long so short I know yeah so yeah at first you know it took like two years to really get it under yeah. my belt and understand it. And also now that I moved home, two of my friends live around and there I also got them really into it. So we like have dinners where we each bring a like plate of food from our phase and we share. And that's so fun. I it. mean, that's great. Yeah. And I, and I think another good point that you made is the planning and the visual, um, you know, at, um, Oceanside and I personally like have this planner that I live by um, and it's uh, you know I kind of do a monthly but then I'm looking weekly and daily and each week when I plan I put the my phase at the top 
Um, yeah. And we're starting to really understand, okay, well, this week, you know, it might be a week where you can see, do a little bit more at work or add a little bit more. And that's, you know, usually when you can do kind of maybe a different type of workout and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's some weeks where it's like, you know what, don't, don't add anything extra and lower your expectations, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So that's just nice to have too, because, it reminds you, Hey, this week, like, just go easy on yourself. Like you're probably, probably not going to be tip, you know, top of your game. (laughs) Like, yeah, that's fine. And relax. And, and it just allows you to, you know, give yourself, um, that relaxed time or, you know, really focus on sleep, really focus on, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the things that might flare you up and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. And it also just helped I'm someone who will like say yes a lot and try and do it all and structuring it around my cycle I feel like gives me permission to say no because I'm like you know what this is the first day of my period I'm taking my location it's time to and I actually I actually do it for myself more than I used to yeah and it's really good because I just know that it's better and it feels better I, I know like, I haven't quite real. got to the point where, which I totally could, but I could look ahead and know that day, that day that I don't want to work and I don't want to do anything. I like the yeah. flotation. <laughs> it's, it's good. I mean, and you can only do so much, like sometimes you have to go to work and you have to take yeah. care of your kids or whatever, but it's just like knowing and just doing the inch less that's good for your life. Yeah. And on, you know, those days that like, okay, oh, it's on a day that I, you know, I see several patients and I know those are my, you know, more challenging energy days. Um, Like, I'm not doing dinner that night. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Not happening. Yeah, Um, yeah, but, you know, just sort of knowing it that your family knows it and your friends know it and you're Mm -hmm. like, yeah, this this is actually not going to happen for me today. So, yeah. And and boundaries are a really important aspect too. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding that, understanding our bodies, and unfort we shouldn't need the permission, of course, but that's the culture we're coming from. So we're all kind mm. of rehabbing out of that a little bit and and trying to stake our claim. Um, yeah. So what what would you say if you're when you're talking to your friends and you're saying I did this and you're a great uh, role model for it? Um, the woman code you mentioned. Have you found any other? tips or tricks or resources or websites or programs or anything like that, that, that have been helpful for you? So I, Woman Code is my go-to book. And then I am looking at my bookshelf and then her second book is called In the Flow um, by Lisa VT and which has been good. And then The Fifth Vital Sign I've been reading, which is like what you said, it's your period is a vital sign. This is something we should talk more about. And then I also read a book called Fix Your Period, which is, it's really like breaks down. Here's a six week program. Here are the recipes. Yep. Um, Yeah. So those, and then it's really helpful to like anyone who will listen. I tell about this and I, it kind of makes you have a little support group because you text about recipes and just like what's going on. Um, which is really fun. So you have and, a support um, group or are you just saying with your friends? We have like an informal support yeah. group. Yeah, well, that's, I want, I, I mean, I'm sure that that exists out there. And, but the, but having that little support group, I think is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And my sister and then my cousin, um, she was really interested in it. So I created her a Google doc that went through each phase with a recipe for every day. And like things you should be thinking about for this week, and a couple other people have asked to be added to that Google Doc. So it's yeah, like you, a, I think you have a little side hustle going on here. This, is, yeah. this sounds like you should be a, a you know period coach and farmer by day and period coach <laughs> by evening. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and then I follow some people on Instagram that are into it. That. Like there, there are these three sisters called Balanced Buyers that have, they are health coaches and they focus a lot on hormone health and they just have, they do like reels and videos and recipes and 
keep it fun. Yeah. So they are fun to follow. And yeah, there are lots more than I thought. Well, I think it's, it's a little bit of a revolution. I think that's happening now yeah. because um, there's just people are women, especially are just waking up to their health. You know, we have a lot more providers. We just are, are, are doing research and, and expecting more. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's just great. It's just still the wild west a little bit trying to figure, figure it out, but there are, there are great resources. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the best thing to understand though, too, is that it took you two years and, and mm -hmm. the food wasn't that hard for you. There's a lot of people that the, the food is, is really overwhelming, but, but yeah. just starting by understanding that there is a cycle and just mm -hmm. recognizing that and then making baby steps, even, even if that it, all it is, is like, you know, instead of working out, you walk one week instead of like, yeah, doing, exactly. you know, we can't just like stay here the whole time, just, just mm -hmm. starting to be aware. And then I think you're right. Just like any transformation, it's baby steps. It's one little thing at a yeah. time, just the nuts, just the soups, whatever it is, like, you know, um, something that you can do. Um, and then you just keep at it. Um, and it changes. So what is your period like now? It so it was eight days long, which is so long. And it's six days now. And I have, like, I used to not be able to move with cramps. And now I'll have slight cramps, maybe none, totally manageable. Like I just take like a cramp bark herb supplement sometimes, which I used to, that used to like not even touch it. So I can just go about my day and it's like, yeah. it's huge. It's really good. Um, and I, I mean, you know, you're still going to have like some emotions during your luteal phase that maybe feel like the world is extra hard, but I don't have a meltdown. <laughs> and it was like a complete like wow what is going on that's totally gone yeah it's really nice I mean that that's amazing and that's you know to to not need ibuprofen and um to really just recognize what your body needs throughout the month is is really really great um yeah I wish that I did this when I was you know your age but I the food for me has been one of the hardest things, right? So I'm a physical therapist, so I can do all the movement stuff, the working out, the, <laughs> the self care, I, I, the whatever it is, I got that part. the The food has always been hard for me, um, but yeah. recently I did start to change things, and um, you know, and I'm 42, but one one month dr drastically changed, and I have been somebody who needs ibuprofen like if that little pill didn't exist I probably wouldn't be going to work but it's for a short period of time but mm -hmm. it's very intense um and this time it I didn't need it it was it That's was amazing. amazing to me I I just and I know it I tell people this I I see it happening but to actually experience it for yourself mm -hmm. in even that short a time when I know my body has more healing left to do, but to have that effect on your cycle in that short of time, you know, it, yeah. it's something it's there, you it's know, big. so this is not something that women just like, Hey, fourth grade, Hey girls, you're going to get this crappy period. It's probably going to suck and too bad for you. Um, it's actually, uh, something to, I find it, um, you know, a way to manage our health, to, to keep on top of our health and, um, and recognize what we need. I, I think that we're lucky to have it, you know? Yeah. Um, to yeah. I those. always say, what if we learned this from the beginning? I know. <laughs> incredible. I know I'm trying, I have a 13 year old, so I'm, I'm trying to impart some of this, but of course I'm lame no matter what I say. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll provide a little cool factor. Yeah. Um, but if if we did start this, I mean, there's a normal erratic nature when you begin to get your period at that age. Yeah. Um, so it, it can be all over the place. But as you, you know, and you're even still at a place, how old are you? 20? 20, 25. 25. So you're, you're like, so this is like now normal ish, like you should be kind of getting into this groove. But up until now, there's some, you know, erratic mm -hmm. um, 
to be expected, symptoms to be expected. So, um, but when you had symptoms, instead of the only answer being birth control, to just hear, even at a young age, hey, you know, nutrition, sleep, understanding your cycle, all these things actually connect, even at a, as a young kid, if you were like, yeah, I'm not doing that, but you heard it and you knew it. Yeah. So that then as soon as it, the symptoms really became a problem and you had, um, you know, at a, we're at an age where you could do something about it or wanted to, then you do, you know, and it's yeah. not like, oh, why am I finding out this info? You were like, oh yeah, this is, somebody told me this actually, I should probably mm-hmm. do that this time. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's probably like, I know that some people have PCOS and endometriosis and that's like I definitely don't struggle with those things and so I know that it's like different for everyone and some people if your body needs like a lot more support it can be really hard but like it can't hurt to implement any of these things. No, it's this. And I mean, so if you have any of those conditions, this is a, this is where you start anyway, you might need other interventions and other support, but it's not in lieu of all the things that you've done for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am, I am super impressed, you know, so that now at 25, you are living by your cycle and um, you know, you have this manageable, um, period that doesn't affect you. Um, and, um, I hope that you can be an inspiration for, for people that this is, that this is just a, you know, a way to live. Um, and we'll, we'll slowly, we'll have it where the cafeterias are, or, you know, they have yeah. meals, right. You go to at college yeah, or something. Cycle. Yeah. This is the follicular line. This is the yeah. ovulation line. This is the, you know, right. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> yeah, me and my friend were like, let's start a retreat center. We'll do exercise. See? With your cycle. Everything. See? Yeah, there we go. See? And like everyone in my life who I live with, men included, eat with my cycle and they seem to enjoy it. Yeah. So just get everyone on board. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> to your get cycle. Get them to cook for you. Like, there you go. Great. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this. This has been great. Um, and um, so why don't you give one parting, like one parting tip? If, if someone's like, this is also overwhelming. What's the, where's the one place they should start? I think it depends on what people gravitate towards. I just started by reading the book. So if books are your thing, just get woman code. Um, or follow one Instagram account just to like get the pictures going. (laughs) Yeah. And then I'll post uh, some of those on, and actually like some of the books you mentioned, we interviewed some of those people. So yeah. um, Yeah. So um, just start listening, just listen. Yes. Let's just start getting information. You don't even have to change anything right now. Don't get overwhelmed. Yeah. Just start understanding that you have, these different phases. Um, and yeah, we sort of need to rewind and redo fourth grade, fifth grade. Education. Yeah, exactly. That, that wasn't. Yeah. Helpful. Yeah. Or like write down something you notice throughout the month about your body. Just like one thing. Anything. Yeah. And track your cycle. Yeah. Track, track your cycle. Track it. Download the app. Yeah. That's get one. an app. There's a million <laughs> of them. Get an app. Just, just yeah. start, just start. Um, well, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. This has been um, super helpful. Um, and here's to everybody living a, a very manageable cycle, cyclical life. Yay. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much for watching that video. Please hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more of those videos and keep learning on how to read your body.